Okay, so moving on, we have the second generation of Monster Hunter. Now, the original release of Monster Hunter 2 wasn't available to the US until we finally got a PSP port later on. So, instead of having a bunch of wyvern-based monsters like in the first generation, the second generation decided to add some new monster types, and a different wyvern body type. In addition to that, they also introduced the ice element that came along with snowy locations to hunt on. These changes really helped make the second generation stand out from the first by adding a lot of new ideas with some of the old. At the same time, I found some of the monsters from the second generation to be rather polarizing amongst fans. People seem to either love or absolutely hate certain monsters. Personally, I like the second generation's roster. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but the monsters that really stand out are pretty great highlights. So why don't we take a look at my top 10 favorite monsters from the second generation. Once again, this is all just my opinion that will be influenced by how much I like their hunts, design, and equipment. Among all the new monster types introduced in the second generation, the apes are my least favorite. That's strictly a personal thing, I've never really liked apes much. With that being said, the Blanganga has a cool design. It's a large snowy ape with this mandrel-like face, and I think the mandrel-like look is neat with the large fangs making it intimidating, which fits since the Blanganga is surprisingly tough. He can hit pretty hard and move quickly, has an awkward lunge attack, and can be kinda annoying when he pounds the ground, though his ice breath is easy to dodge. I've heard that Belangana will even wipe off a paintball, but I haven't yet experienced this, so I don't know if it's true. If it is, then fuck him. The Blangana barely makes it on my list, as I think it has a decent design, an engaging hunt even if it can get annoying. Seriously, I've been screwed over so many times by that lunge attack. And he has a pretty good insect glaive, though I'm not really huge on the armor. Another new monster type that was introduced were the crab, and even though I like them more than the apes, they're still not amazing. Listen, I love aquatic creatures, so I have a bit of a bias here. Though of the two crabs that I've hunted, Daimo is my lesser favorite. It has an okay design, I mean, it's a large red crab who lives in a mamala skull, which is awesome. If you couldn't tell by the large claws, Daimo is a more defensive monster when in battle. It'll swing its claws at you, spit out a spray of water, and sometimes will move while doing this, and at times it digs underground to pierce you with its shell's horn, or somehow jumps in the air and try to land on you. While yes, Daimo can do some decent or even harsh damage, once you have its pattern down, then dodging attacks actually becomes easy. In fact, being in the right spot under Daimo puts you in its blind spot, making it even easier to kill. At times, Daimo will shell up, and that can be annoying because it becomes super defensive, and your weapons will bounce off of it. Now, I don't care for its armor, I mean, it looks okay, and like a football player uniform, so yeah, that's a thing. However, I do like its insect glaive, which might sound weird, but it has some good sharpness, high power, and even gives a slight defensive boost, which are all positives to me. Daimo, you're just okay. So here's one of the monsters who seems very polarizing for players. Some people love Rajeng, others hate him. Me, I think it's a cool monster, but I don't love it. Design-wise, well, normal Rajeng looks eh. I'm not a huge fan of its fugly face, though those horns are nice. Once the Rajeng is enraged though, it gets this cool gold mane with stripes going down its forearms, making Rajeng look like a badass. He can get even more enraged where his arms start to kinda glow. Hunting wise, oh boy. Rajeng is a fast hard hitting monster with some fist combos, pounding the ground, shooting some lightning, and will throw large objects at you. And this is just when he's in his normal state. When enraged, shit! Get your ass ready cause now Rajang moves much faster, shoots some super powerful lightning, and that dive attack that requires some fast reflexes to dodge. So yeah, Rajang puts up a tough fight, and as frustrating as it can get, I still kind of find it fun. Don't get me wrong, I don't hunt Rajang that much, but I did fight it enough to get its insect glaive in for you. I've never made Rajang armor, I have seen what it looks like though, and yeah, seems awesome. 
let's talk about the second crab-like monster that I've hunted, the Shogun Sienatar, or uh, however you're, you're supposed to pronounce it. It's the Samurai Crab. First off, Shogun is quite different from Daimo. It's blue, has a long tall head, and its claws are used for swiping and slashing rather than guarding. Because of this, the Shogun is more aggressive in comparison. You're mostly safe behind the monster, but Shogun does have some moves to reach all around, so be on your guard. In addition to that, Shogun will also dig underground to try to stab you with its head, and at times, Shogun may even jump in the air and try to stab you on its way down. In Generations, the only game I've hunted Shogun, it now has the ability to inflict you with bleeding, which is annoying, but it makes you more cautious when fighting. Unfortunately, Shogun has the worst shell, at least to me, as it will sometimes be a Gravio's head, which can shoot water when the Shogun is on the ceiling, a move that feels so useless. Oh well, Shogun is still a pretty fun hunt. Armor-wise, it looks badass, and is even useful since it can greatly increase your affinity, so combine that with some Nargo weapons and you'll be landing crits left and right. As for weapons, I really haven't used them. I guess the dual blades look cool, but that's it. One thing I think the second generation does really well, at least to me, is its Elder Dragons. Which takes us to Teostra. Teostra is an awesome, fiery, chimera-looking dragon. He has a great mane and a noble crown of horns and fur on its head. For me though, Teostra is a hunt I'm a bit mixed on. Sure, it's got some well-balanced moves, like when he charges at you, swings his tail around, blows fire, and bites at you. If these moves make contact, they can do some harsh damage, and now Teostra even has Blast Blight, so have fun! Teostra can create some small fire explosions that are usually easy to dodge, but can also make the hunt feel a bit tedious. The only move I don't yet have down is Teostra's Nova Explosion, which it will do at a certain time in the hunt. Breaking body parts on Teostra can get annoying too, since it can take forever to break a body part off. I haven't used any of Teostra's weapons, and I don't care to. Sorry, but none of them really interest me. I do have Teostra armor and generation, since it's a low rank monster in that game, and eh, it's okay. I think Teostra is a cool monster, it's just not one I hunt that often. Personally, I like to take on its alternate species, or whatever you want to refer to it as, Lunastra, as it looks really cool. I have no idea how to properly pronounce this monster's name, but I'll try here. Laviasoth is kinda like the Plesioth, if the Plesioth was a lava fish that was more fun to hunt. Okay, so I've only gotten to hunt Lavasioth in generations. With that being said, I still enjoy it. Lavasioth has a way better design than Plesioth. Maybe it's just me, but Lavasioth's design reminds me that of Coelacanth, with its multiple fins, thick tail, and wider head. Also, the red lava-like pattern on its body makes this monster look pretty neat. Now, Laviosoth will slide towards you, shoot explosive fireballs, jump in the air and flop around like a fish, and use an annoying as fuck hip check. It's always the hip checks. The most fun part of the hunt and the coolest concept is when Lavasioth digs underground and creates dangerous rocks when it splashes some lava, and will even shoot some fireballs at you. Yes, this will leave Lavasioth open to some easy attacks. I just find the hunt to be both unique and entertaining. I love the look of its armor, at least in high rank, and I have seen a couple of Lavasioth's weapons, the longsword and charge blade, both looking badass. Since I've only hunted Lavasioth in generations, I can only take on the monster in high rank multiplayer, so I haven't hunted it too often, which is why I'm looking forward to taking it on in world. So, on the back of Monster Hunter 4 you, there's a picture of a strange monster you don't get to hunt until G-Rank, which is annoying because I really couldn't wait to hunt it. I eventually did, but thank god Generations gave us Camellios much earlier. Camellios is a bizarre looking elder dragon, with purple tough looking skin, a large flat tail, crazy eyes, and a long horn and tongue. Much like its name implies, Camellios is partially inspired by chameleons, such as in its eyes and tongue, and it will even do that shake before stepping, which I find to be kinda cute. In battle, the Camellios is also interesting, as it moves around a bit sporadically while trying to hit you with its tongue and tail. 
On top of that, the Camellios will shoot out poison, and quite often. And if you get hit by its tongue, you have a good chance of losing an item, which I do find annoying with how frequently that can happen. There are even moments when the Camellios makes the area foggy and turns invisible. And surprisingly, this isn't used to be cheap, as I never seem to get caught off guard or hit when it's invisible. Its armor looks okay in G rank, but in low rank, it's awesome because it makes my character look like a wizard, and I love that. I like the Camellios weapons too, like its longsword, dual blades, and my personal favorite, its insect glaive. Camellios is just a neat, unique elder dragon in the series. Okay, so if you would have asked me my third time hunting Tigrex if I love the monster, I would have said no. These days, however, I've really grown to like this monster. Much like Rojang, Tigrex is a polarizing monster, and I can tell why. I mean, yeah, Tigrex is a fast-moving monster who gets some insane moves like its spin attack, its roar being able to hurt you, and if you're in small areas with Tigrex's charge attack, you can get pushed up against walls and be relentlessly attacked, taking a lot of damage or even getting killed, especially when this monster is enraged, though the red veins do look pretty killer. And I'll admit, those can be annoying aspects to deal with, particularly that last one. However, I have learned to respond to this monster much better. What I mean by that is, yes, Tigrex is fast, so it will punish you if you fight too aggressively. Instead, only attack when necessary, constantly being on the move. Because it turns out, Tigrex leaves itself open to some quick strikes after each attack. To me, it's a fun hunt, as it's all about paying constant attention to the monster, and at times you can even try to lure Tigrex into positions to give you an advantage over it. Honestly, I think Tigrex looks really cool, with its winged forearms, the unique way it moves, its spiky tail, and that interesting color scheme of yellow scales with blue stripes. Tigrex armor doesn't look amazing, but it usually comes with some decent skills making it useful. Weapons often have high power, and high sharpness, but little durability, making them somewhat worth it. At the very least, they have some cool designs like the longsword, dual blades, and sword and shield. So let's continue on talking about a monster that is either a hit or a miss for people. From what I can tell, people who hate this monster tend not to like it because of its speed, and they do have a few extra reasons as well, but speed's the big one. I, on the other hand, don't see much of an issue with Nargakuga. Sure, Narga's a fast monster, however, it leaves itself open quite a few times, and there are big openings for dodging and blocking Narga's fast attacks, such as its lunges and tail swipes. On top of that, Narga doesn't really hit too hard, especially with its spike throwing, which I have been hit by once, I think? To be fair, its tail slam can do some decent damage though. But when dodged, this move leaves Narga open to some easy strikes. So I find this battle to be well balanced, if you're playing carefully. Keep in mind, I've only hunted Narga Kuga in 3U a couple times, and in generations, many many more. Oh, Narga has an amazing design, as at first I thought it was a bat dragon, but it's actually a cougar, which... Yeah, I should have caught on to that with its name. Plus, Narga has some dark fur, sharp bladed wings, a thin tail that can become spiky, and even glowing red eyes at times. I love the look of Narga armor, and it usually comes with good skills, and its weapons are fantastic. They have good power, high sharpness, and nice affinity. To me, Narga Kuga is just one of the best. Elder Dragons are usually a fun final challenge to me, that I don't often hunt too much unless they're in low rank. Kushala, on the other hand, is a monster I hunted quite a bit in high rank in 4U. To begin with, Kushala is such a badass monster. It has this really interesting metallic-like skin, these really neat wings, and an intimidating face that just makes such a cool-looking dragon. Hunting Kushala is fun as well. It has some simple moves like swinging its tail, biting at you, and charging around or swiping at hunters. Now, Kushala is a master of manipulating the wind, which it of course uses this skill in battle as well. 
Okay, so the wind it puts around itself from time to time can be annoying, simply because of how it will push you back in this game. Though I don't seem to be affected by it too often, and the tornadoes Kushala can summon aren't too hard to dodge either, and usually don't get in the way of the battle. Though the reason why I don't get affected by wind too often could have to do with the fact that I often hunted Kushala with poisoning based weapons, which do affect its wind based attacks. There are even moments when Kushala will create black tornadoes and wind around itself, and it's awesome! I hunted Kushala so much in For You because I found the hunt to be entertaining. I used a poison insect glaive a lot, which again is a status that Kushala is most vulnerable to, and I really wanted to grind it to get that insect glaive you can make from it. The armor you can make from Kushala is neat looking, and I found it useful in generations. Kushala's weapons are killer. I love the insect glaive and the sword and shield. Of all the Elder Dragons I've hunted, Kushala is my favorite so far, with an enjoyable hunt, badass design, and two really cool weapons. Well, that's my list, and I hope you liked it. By all means, go ahead and share your favorite second generation monsters in the comments down below. I'll see you all next time, where I'll be taking a look at the third generation, the generation that quite a few people got into the series with. Well, see you all then!